God and yay you. We have made it to session eight by God's grace. We have learned so much about God through the Shema and we've seen ourselves in the Israelites story. Each week has built upon the next and given us a richer picture of Deuteronomy 6 and the love of God. My grandmother used to do a crossword puzzle from her newspaper every week, and it was totally normal for us to find it laying open on her kitchen table. And whoever sat down to it next would pick up where the other left off. Now, my family has brought it into the 21st century and we love to play the New York Times mini crossword puzzle every single morning. And we even have a little text chain that has been going for years now where we report our times to each other because in addition to being a little nerdy, we are also a little bit competitive. It's a lot of fun and in a small way, gives us a way to touch base every single morning. It's not uncommon for us to share something that's going on in our lives through that text chain. Now, when we began this study, I'm reminded of my crossword puzzle loving family because at the beginning of our journey, you may not have known what the Shema was. It's like we came with open squares ready to be filled in. And with each week, God has given us a fuller picture of what he wants us to understand from this passage. And we've had a lot of fun doing it together, growing in our relationship with God and in our relationship with each other. Maybe as you are approaching this session, you feel like there are spaces yet to be filled in. Maybe you have some more questions or curiosity about God, or about this area of Deuteronomy, about the Bible. Maybe this study is sparking a hunger in you for more. Indeed, the more I spend time in scripture, the more I get the feeling I have so much more yet to learn. And I want to spend time with him more in this way. I get the feeling the Holy Spirit is waiting for us at the table like my grandmother was waiting for me with the crossword puzzle. My prayer is that he has imprinted the Shema on your heart for the rest of your life, but that you don't stop here. This is a short passage of scripture, but it is life changing. And the feeling of togetherness you have experienced with him and with each other will stay with you in extraordinary ways for years to come. Let's say it one more time together as a group. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This week, your homework was paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is simply putting something you have heard or read into your own words. We heard a paraphrase example earlier when we heard the paraphrase of Eugene Peterson in the message. He said, attention, Israel, God, our God, God, the one and only. Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all you've got. Now you might not have realized it, but I've been paraphrasing this whole time to you in my teaching as I've attempted to put the message into some Jillian phraseology. And although some find this tool intimidating, I think practicing communicating it in your own words and sharing with others can really cement that message into our own hearts. It doesn't need to be complicated. More words doesn't necessarily mean more depth or more clarity. So if someone asks you the question, what is the Shema? How would you explain it in your own words? I hope you've enjoyed hearing from others today in your group. And I hope I have the opportunity to hear some of those phrases as you share yours on social media, make sure you tag Dayton Women in the Word so we can be encouraged from you. Here's my paraphrase, and I made it a little more personal by putting my name in it. Let this sink into your heart, Jillian. God 
is the one for you. No one else. You belong with him. Love him with the total territory of your being, all that you are and all that you will become, all you have to give now and in the future, and give it some oomph. My fair paraphrase just focused on the Shema here in Deuteronomy, but you may choose also to paraphrase Jesus's reiteration and expansion on it in one of the gospels that we talked about a few sessions back. Paraphrase is a tool we use to practice remembrance as we pass it on to others. When we share what God has spoken to us with others, we are honoring him as the Shema calls us to do. So one more time, let's review all of the main points that we have discussed together. The questions we have asked of the Shema are, why do we love God and how do we love God? Why do we love God? We love God because he loved us and made a way for us and because he is worthy. And how do we love God? We love God by receiving from him, by listening to him, by cherishing him in our hearts and obeying him. We love God with the entire territory of our beings, both now and in the times to come. We love God by loving our neighbor. And lastly, we love God by remembering him, which overcomes barriers left and right to loving him. So you might be asking, what now? Well, in your companion guide, we have some suggestions about what to do next as you finish your study. We suggest that you read or listen to a good commentary, and we have some suggestions for you in your guide of ones that we feel have been helpful to us. But you can also check in with your pastor for some good suggestions. Here is a moment of transition that is good to pause and pray before you move on. Take some time and ask God to give you discernment about where to go next in your journey with him and in his word. We believe he will direct you to the right next place. Here are some options to talk to him about. Think about maybe your church is studying something that you want to join in deeper study with them together. Perhaps your family or your spouse would like to study something together. Or perhaps you feel called to continue studying with Dayton Women in the Word studies, which you can discover on our website. Especially if you'd like to continue for learning from Deuteronomy, we invite you to join the Dwell Richly plan as we go through the entire book together. You can also join with us in our open Bible nights as we open the Bible with our entire community. And you can find all those events listed on our website. Please come and please bring a friend. Wherever you go from here, whatever new or familiar lands God is calling you to, we pray you go as the beloved of God, knowing his love for you and making his love known to others. May the Shema not just be a study that you finish today, but a start to a new way of life for you today and every day God has given you. We love you and we hope to open the Bible again with you soon.